Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Woman angry after MPP uses her late sister's photos in an anti-vaccination post. A pan-Canada COVID-19 vaccine passport will soon be released. International students and migrant workers feel unsafe without health care or sick leave. The UN sets up a cash fund in Afghanistan. Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, wrote an open letter to US Congress in support of paid family leave. Donald Trump to launch a new social media platform. UK police charged man with the murder of David Amos. Abortion has been legalized in Benin. To start off, the independent MPP Randy Hillier posted a photo and personal information of Farisa Nawab. Nawab was 20 when she died on September 11th from an autoimmune disease. Nawab and 10 other individuals appeared on Randy's social media in a post which suggested that they died as a result of their first or second COVID vaccine doses. However, Amara Nawab stated that this was a complete fabrication since her sister passed away due to a genetic disorder. Adding to this, Hillier did not ask for consent when posting about Farisa. Additionally, others who knew individuals featured in Hillier's post pointed out that their loved one's death was unrelated to the vaccines. In other Canadian news, on Thursday, October 21st, Prime Minister Trudeau is expected to provide details about a pan-Canadian international vaccine passport. This passport will provide a unified and secure method of proof of vaccination for all international travel. As it stands, Canadians currently have to upload their vaccine proof into the ArriveCam app prior to traveling. Beginning on October 30th, anyone entering a Canadian train or departing from a Canadian airport must be fully vaccinated. Uh, we made a commitment to ensure that there is a national standard for a proof of vaccination certificate uh, that will be issued by every province and territory so that people can travel domestically but particularly internationally. And today I'm happy to confirm that all provinces and territories have confirmed uh, that they will be moving forward with a standardized national proof of vaccination. Over in Newfoundland and Labrador, migrant workers and international students face paying astronomical fees for health care while working minimum wage jobs. One woman, Maria Dasan, recounts how she begged campus security not to call an ambulance for her when she fainted at work. This was because she could not afford the $1,800 ambulance fee or the visit to the emergency room while also losing money from her minimum wage job. Stories like Maria's demonstrate the precarious position that many migrant workers and international students find themselves in. These individuals express being exploited by workers to work in unsafe conditions. They express wanting to avoid health care and its associated fees, and they are working towards change. In Afghanistan, the United Nations has set up a trust fund. Since the Taliban takeover of the nation, Afghanistan has faced an economic disaster. Particularly, food prices have risen dramatically, banks have been running out of money, and many employees have not been paid for their labor in months. In an attempt to combat the economic hardships facing citizens, the trust is designed to get cash into the hands of Afghan nationals quickly and stimulate the economy. The UN says that without this fund, many Afghans will likely not be able to survive the winter. 97% of households in Afghanistan could be below the poverty line by early to mid-2022. 97%. We have to step in, we have to stabilize a people's economy, and in addition to saving lives in the immediate, we also have to save livelihoods. Channels of funding directly uh, to community groups, uh, to community members. Uh, it will provide a cash for work uh, to support uh, small public works efforts. Over in the United States, Democrats have been configuring how much to spend on a budget reconciliation bill. This bill is meant to address many issues like climate change, child care and health care. Entering these negotiations is Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, who wrote an open letter to the House of Democratic Leaders. In this letter, Meghan called on leaders to not bargain when it comes to paid family leave. Specifically, she argued that paid leave should be a right rather than an inconsistent option dependent on whether employers have it in place or not. 
At this time, only 23% of Americans who are working have the ability to go on paid leave, and only 7% of low-wage workers have, at minimum, a single day of paid family leave. In other news, Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, has announced that Trump Media and Technology Group will launch a new app called Truth Social. This app was designed in response to Trump being banned from Facebook and Twitter after riots at the U.S. Capitol in January. Trump argues that the Truth Social platform will provide the opportunity to fight back against big tech, who he has criticized for giving a platform to the Taliban, but not to him. Over in the UK, Ali Harbi Ali has been charged for the murder of David Ames. Ames worked in Parliament for almost 40 years. According to NPR, Ames, 69 at the time of his death, was a social conservative. His political leanings included opposing abortion, fighting for animal rights, and supporting Brexit. This tragedy has encouraged conversations about how the country will protect their leaders. At this time, authorities are continuing to build their case. We will continue to build our case. If there are members of the public who have further information that might help the investigation, I would urge them to come forward. Every piece of information in investigations like this is important, and you will not be wasting our time. Please contact us through the anti-terrorist hotline. The threat to MPs, as the Home Secretary said yesterday, has been elevated a little bit to, to substantial, but that is in line uh, with the general threat, uh, the terrorist threat level in the country. And I think the police have done a fantastic job of reaching out to MPs, telling them what they need to do uh, to ensure their own safety. In West Africa, Benin parliamentarians have voted in favour of legalising abortion. Now, women in the nation can seek to terminate a pregnancy within three months if the pregnancy is likely to cause them or their baby material, educational, professional, or moral distress. This controversial decision saw Parliament erupt in a heated debate among those who supported extending abortion rights and those who did not. Nevertheless, the Ministry of Health is hopeful that the new law will prevent the deaths of hundreds of women in the future who will no longer be forced to seek illegitimate avenues to terminate their pregnancies. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.